Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here in this uh, tutorial for 3D projection. And uh, told you I'd get it done, and here it is. Basically, we take a single still image and projecting it onto 3D geometry, we can achieve camera moves that make it seem like the picture is actually in 3D space. Here's what I mean. See that? See what I did there? All right, well, that's the tutorial for today. Uh, I hope you guys, no, I'm just kidding. Um, as you can see, I can somewhat fly around this room. Now, obviously, we have a slight limitation. I mean, who would ever shoot from an angle this high? So we don't want to do that. Oh, yeah, and they're white and blackness. Um, but once you understand the limitations, you can actually create some very dynamic camera movements and uh, have some fun. Oh, and real quick, I just want to say thanks for making the uh, blog such a cool place to be. Um, I appreciate all the comments and, uh, you know, all the uh, interactivity. Um, although there's one problem I just want to bring up. Um, we just want this to be a positive community. And frankly, some of you guys have been sympathizing with Sam Loya and the way he gets treated on some of the video co-pilot tutorials. Well, he may have been blown up and shot to bits, but hey, that's just... Uh, the way it is, we actually were talking the other day, and he said, "Hey, uh, you know, maybe I could be the one hitting you." And um, you know, we both had a good laugh, and uh, you know, we moved on. <laughs> uh, just kidding. Sam's a good guy, and uh, he takes everything head on. You know, head on into the wall, head on into my fist. Yes, you like that. I'll play in words there. All right, so back to it. 3D projection. Um, what we're going to do is take this picture of the wall. Pretty simple. You can also do this with other images that have multiple walls, but this is an easy way to demonstrate the technique. So we'll take the wall, drag it into a new comp, and let's see if we can make some more room here. All right, and I'm going to create a new camera. Now, if you know the camera information for the picture, that's helpful, but if not, uh, 35 millimeters is usually a Good guess and then we're gonna create a new solid and uh, we'll call this the walls we want it to be comp size and we want it to be pure white that's important and what we're gonna do is duplicate the wall edit duplicate and you would duplicate these walls as many times as necessary to complete the shape of your photograph so in this case, we have two walls, one for the floor, one for the back wall here. And what I want to do is come over to my effects and presets, type grid, and take the grid effect and apply it. And if we shut one of these off, we basically want to see a grid. So if we set the border to three and change it to width slider, we can uh, just see a nice grid. Then we'll copy this grid to our second wall layer. So now there's two. And then we'll take both of these layers and turn them into 3D layers. And then we'll take one of them and we'll take the rotation tool. We're going to rotate it on the X axis. So we're going to rotate it. And if you hold down shift, it'll kind of snap. So it's hard to see, but basically we've rotated it. And then we're going to take this top one and we're going to move it up so that it crosses like so. And then we're going to take both of them and drag it down. So now we sort of have a floor. Now, we're not at the right perspective because the right perspective would be something like, something like this. But that's okay. We don't want to adjust that at this point. We just want to set up the scene so it looks about right. And then if we go in here on the Y axis, or the green axis, we can move this forward just a little bit. And you can see that the uh, grid lines match up. Okay, so far so good. Is everybody with me? Good. Let's create a light. Now we're gonna use a point light, but in After Effects CS3, you may have to use a spotlight. So either way. Also, you want to make sure that the layer cast shadows and the shadow darkness is 100%. So all these settings, okay. 
And, all right, we're getting somewhere. And, by the way, sorry if my voice is a little raspy. I went to a soccer game, and I had a snow cone. And uh, they're the, uh, you know, like a cone with big mountain of snow. Or what is it, ice? And they put some sugary sweetness on it. So I was eating my snow cone, and a bee flies into my mouth and stings me in the throat, has little baby bees, and then the baby bees also begin to sting my throat. So they're stinging me up good. Luckily, uh, luckily I was all right. Okay, so now we've sort of created this light, and you can see it's sort of affecting the grid layer, um, but that's okay for right now. Now, we need to take this wall and project it onto this geometry. And when I say geometry, I mean these 3D walls. So what we want to do is take this wall layer and duplicate it. So one of them is going to be our reference. And one of them is going to be our projected otherwise known as the image that we're going to project onto the geometry. So what we'll do is turn the second one or the projected one into a 3D layer and we'll scale it down just a little bit. Then we're going to take the position of the camera and the position of the projected and the position of the light. And what we want to do is take the position of the camera, copy it, and paste it to the light and paste it to the projected image. So if we go to let's see the top view, basically we've taken all three of these things, the projected image, which is right here, we can colorize it, the camera, which is right here, and the light, which is uh, the little sun looking thing. So they're all right on top of each other. Now let's return to our active camera and let's go to the next step. Now, the projected image is right on top of the camera. So what we need to do is uh, actually go back to that top view and we want to move it forward just a little bit so that you can see it because it's on the camera and you can't quite see it. And we'll go back to the active camera. So now, you can see that this layer is right up in the camera's face. So what we need to do is scale it down. And then we can also just take the layers, hold down shift and just uh, size it down so it fits right into the uh, comp window. Basically we want it to match the original image, which is our reference image, which we should lock. So that looks pretty good. Now, here's the tricky part. How do we set this projected image to project itself? Well, firstly, projecting images is called light transmission in After Effects. So the amount of light to transmit or project is based on this percentage value. So we turn this up to 100, and it's going to project 100% of its light. Now, light transmission is based on the shadow function. So if we go up to the light options, you can hit AA quickly. We see all of our options for the layer in 3D space. And we want the cast shadows to be on, and we want the color to be white. Good. Now for the projected image, we want the light transmission at 100%. And cast shadows, because remember light transmission is based on casting shadows, we want it to be on, but we want it to be only. In other words, we only want to see the shadow. We don't want to see the layer and the shadow. I hope that makes sense. Um, other thing we have to do is remember, these 3D wall layers are being affected by the lights. So we need to make sure that that doesn't happen. So let's uh, bring these layers up. AA brings up our options. We want the accept lights option to be off. So we want to accept shadows or light transmission, but we don't want to accept lights, just the shadow or the light transmission. So with that on or with that off, we can then turn the grid off and then turn off our reference layer. Now, if you remember, we linked the light, the camera, and the projected image all up to the position of the camera. Now that's important because we want the light to project the image 
as seen through the camera at the point in time where the picture is taking place, otherwise known as this view. And then what we want to do is take the projected image, parent it to the camera, take the light, parent it also to the camera. So now if we move the camera around, you can see we're changing the scene, but the projected image is linked to the camera, which means what's being projected does not change. So now if we turn our grid back on by turning the effects back on and our reference image and and if we turn the accept shadows off temporarily then what we can do is take the orbit camera tool and move it around until the scene matches up and just hit C to get through the different tools. We can use the move tool. Um, we can use sort of the rotation tool. And basically, you want to just get it as close as possible to the uh, scene. And if you have multiple layers, also you want to line those up individually. Um, now, our walls don't quite make it, so we're just going to extend these, stretch them out a bit. Take this one, stretch it out a bit, and line them up as needed. So now that looks pretty close. Um, you know, we could play around with the perspective some, maybe uh, bring it up just a little bit. You know, I mean, you're the one that probably took the photograph, so you can tell. Um, it's not essential that it's perfect because we're just creating an illusion, and that illusion is gonna it's gonna shine through whether it's perfect or not. So. Now that we have the angle correct, now that our geometry matches that of our image, let's go now to our walls, AA, turn accept shadows on. Then we'll turn our grids off by shutting the effects off, and then turn off the reference image so that it doesn't show through. So now, if we unlink the projected image from the camera to none, and make sure you do this and the light unlink them to the camera and the reason why is we want the light and the image to stay where it is when it's projecting the image so that when the camera moves around we will sort of see three dimensions and if we look back behind here you can see our light and our wall is projecting itself onto this uh, 3d structure that we've created so now we can, you know, zoom in here. We can uh, create a camera move. Okay, so this is about as far as I got when I noticed something was terribly wrong. Now, we are casting a shadow. So in order for After Effects to stay fast and robust, it uses a shadow map, which is sort of a internal calculation of a bitmapped shadow, or in this case, a 3D projection. So the problem with the projection is it's a picture file. A lot more data in a picture file than there is in a shadow. With the shadow it's just black or gray and you can't really tell that it's out of focus because there isn't any detail. So that's sort of a problem. And even if you use a high resolution image you're gonna see the same problem. So the solution I found is if you go into your composition settings, advanced, options we get these advanced 3d options now the shadow map resolution is based on the comp size but we need more than that so if you go to about 3000 or 4000 that will increase the quality check that out and we're at half resolution but if we go up to full resolution we're almost at the previous quality before we uh, did this whole camera projection business so I gotta say it's looking pretty good now if we fly around this room, you can see we actually have some pretty decent detail. Now we can take this a step further and make multiple instances of this wall. For example, I can come in here, take the mask tool and extract certain parts of the wall. And if I bring up my mask, subtract, I've sort of erased that part of the wall and then I can duplicate the layer push it back in Z space and then I can actually uh, inverse the mask or subtract it 
and you know you can then create some intermediate layers like a little small layer that could fit right in here and then you would get even more 3d projection so if you could imagine I could you know I can start by just taking this one pushing it underneath the door and you know that solves that initial problem um, you know and I can make probably another little layer to fit right here so basically you get the idea uh, the more layers you know the better I could do a little layer for the fire extinguisher and layer in you know tons of stuff but for the sake of this tutorial we'll just use two walls and uh, that'll look pretty good okay so let's go ahead and animate this camera now we can bring the camera down really low to the floor and if I toggle through the camera tools I can move forward and if we go to the camera set the position uh, let's see point of interest and position keyframes move forward a couple of seconds and just kind of push forward F9 to give those easy ease curve keyframes and then we can uh, preview that okay now the reason this looks more than just you know zooming in on a picture is sort of the whole phenomena of distance and your eye things that get very close to your eye exponentially get larger in other words if you put your hand out in front of your face and bring it towards your eye it's gonna come like it's getting huge right and then when it gets to your eye you're like whoa look at these huge hands right but say someone you know 20 feet away from you takes their hand and moves it closer to you right you're gonna be like what are you doing you know because you will not feel scared at all but if that same person comes up to you and punches you in the face you know you're gonna think twice about um, you know distance and your face I would so to create more of a dynamic angle or camera movement what we can do is move the camera forward then zoom the camera out you gotta be careful because you will uh, reveal parts of the image that you don't want to reveal and then if we go and set the keyframe for the point of interest and the position move forward the background will take longer to get to our face but the foreground will seem to kinda go by pretty quickly and uh, let's preview that and uh, hopefully that is the case okay so as you can see the floor seems to really make uh, make good time um, and you can see we can really scale this floor by not even moving very fast and then the other cool trick is to actually move the camera And uh, obviously, you want to be careful not to get out of the uh, frame of the picture because you are limited by that, of course. Um, but let's take a look at this. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you found it uh, at least eye opening. Um, there's certainly a lot of things you can use it for, adding some just some dynamic establishing shots of a scene where you only have a photograph and maybe the place doesn't really exist um, you know I'm sure you guys will think of tons of things okay well be sure to come stop by the blog and leave a comment um, we got some new stuff there every day and we try to and of course come check out our store uh, hey you know we got some great DVDs in there and uh, I'm sure you'll find something useful. Um, if you think these tutorials, these free ones are good, you know, think about how good the ones that actually cost money are. Well, I'm Andrew Kramer, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I look forward to the next one, and, you know.